Good morning, everyone. I am the great Terini. I know all. I see all. And this ain't Vegas, so I tell all. So it's Friday. Hope you all are having a great day. Um, right now, we're at a point where it's it's 33 degrees. The roads are covered with water or ice. I can't quite tell from where I'm at. And there's like a rainy snow coming down. And as the temperature drops, I'm sure it will get worse this morning. Right now, it's kind of balancing on the, the freezing zone. So we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Now, I got such a great outpouring of love in this, uh, in yesterday's video. Um, it seemed, just seemed to be a little bit more than usual. And for that reason, I'm going to do a uh, surprise reading for everyone that left a comment on that video. And I, I had a few more things to show you all, but uh, yeah, I think I'll wait and uh, maybe do it tomorrow. I just felt like these cards needed to be readed. First off, I'm going to give you all a group reading. Okay, I don't normally do this, but uh, two cards fell out. So, let me uh, show you the first one. You have the Six of Blades. And that is combined with the Knight of Wands. So we have the Six of Blades mixed with the Knight of Wands. And here's what they could be telling you. Okay, the Six of Blades is telling you to leave your troubles behind and enter a period of tranquility with the Six of Blades. Now is the perfect time to get away so you can unpack your baggage without any external pressure. The negative connotations of the other blades are left in the dark and you are given some temporary relief to reorganize and restructure your life. Old wounds and negative relationships are not welcome where you are going. You may even feel as though you can finally breathe and focus on the most important relationship you have, the one with yourself. Keywords are escape, change of situation, transition, and newly found tranquility. Now the six of uh, blades... The element is air. The astrological association is Mercury and Aquarius. In numerology, this card is six. In the tree of life sphere, it's located in the sphere of beauty and rebirth. The key meaning is moving on. Now the Six of Blades shows you moving on from a situation or a relationship and enjoying a period of peace and harmony. This may manifest mentally rather than physically as you take a more detached approach, distancing yourself from drama and complication. This gives an opportunity to rest and recharge. It may lead you to explore a new environment or make a spiritual discovery. The card can show travel as part of your role and respite from the office or other workplace. 
And in relationships, the card commonly shows two people spending time apart. More negatively, the interpretation is a relationship ending. And it says to uh, look at the surrounding cards for uh, further interpretation, which I'll get to here in a little bit. Uh, now, this ending may be positive or negative, depending on your situation. On a more literal note, the card can simply show taking a break from work or your usual environment, and you may travel possibly on a trip overseas. The Knight of Rods is saying that as a person, the Knight of Rods is, is spontaneous and popular and makes a sport out of grand gestures. He is happiest when he has a goal or, or objective, and if unfocused, he can abandon tasks too easily, leaving unfinished project in his wake. The Knight of Rods wants you to approach a new project with enthusiasm and a positive attitude. This card asks that you find fun in the mundane day-to-day -day dealings to keep things interesting. Keywords are spontaneous, enthusiastic, unfocused, and popularity. Okay, now for this card, the element is fire. Astrological Associations, or Scorpio and Sagittarius, and the key meaning is a proposal. Now, as an influence, events speed up. Any blocked progress will be lifted. So this is a welcome card if you have been waiting for decisions or have generally been feeling stuck. You can now have the conversations and action you need to move your projects on. Follow your intuition and push forward. This card is particularly auspicious for moving house, finding new work, and making progress on personal and professional issues. In reading, this night often appears to predict a, su a successful writing project. In creative pursuits, you may attract acknowledgement and support, both emotionally and financially. An additional meaning of the card is travel and emigration. As a person, creative and dynamic, the Knight of Wands is an innovator and likes to do things his way. He inspires those around him and is excellent at networking to promote his ideas. He may be a traveler, a visitor, or he may have had many experiences and stories to tell. He is, however, impatient to get things done and can make snap judgments about people based on first impressions. I can do that. I'm pretty good at that. As a potential partner, he can show a charismatic, talkative individual who may set, take things a little too fast at first. As the you card in a reading, fire up your ambition. So there you have it. And what I believe this is saying is that you need some downtime. Okay, you need to take a break. Clear your head. Walk away from it for a little bit. Meditate, take a long, hot, soothing bath, do something just to clear your head and relax. Okay? And once you've had some time to recuperate, you'll have your juices flowing back again, your creative juices, your ambition, your work. It'll all come back. This little break is needed. It'll be of great benefit to you if you just stop relaxed and had a chance to take a break so you could jump back in here with full force. All right. And I think we could all use a break so we can come back refreshed and ready to, to start anew. So there's your reading. I hope this applies to you. Or you get some meaning out of it.
Okay. Now, the people that uh, made some comments. Um, just going down my list here that I have online here. And Susan Parker. And she wrote, thank you, Terry. This was certainly different. And yesterday's video was a little bit different, I admit. Uh, I enjoy your sense of humor. I appreciate that, Susan. Because some people just don't get my humor. Stay safe and warm and be blessed. Thank you. You too, Susan. So here we go for you, Susan. Your card is... Huh? The Two of Blades. For this card, the element is air. Astrological association is the moon in Libra. It represents the number two. And in the tree of life position, it's in the sphere of wisdom. And the meanings, take time to think, and a stalemate. Now, the two of blades uh, shows thinking time before a decision. A situation has reached a stalemate, so you can view this period as a truce or a rest between further negotiation. The tendency is to protect yourself, have a little peace, and not take action. Unfortunately, this coming battle may not go away. Resolve it now, and it's done. Otherwise, the situation festers and may return. As there are two blades on this card, this too can reveal a person you cross swords with. It's most likely that your difficult person is sharp tongue, but don't be afraid of a lashing. Stand your ground and say what you think. The card commonly comes up in readings to show employment issues and also time out in relationships. This may be circumstantial due to partners living in different places. Whatever your experience of the two of blades, help is at hand in the form of supported friends and colleagues. Listen to advice and then take the best practical step forward. The two of blades indicates that you have reached an impasse, usually with regards to a specific situation that requires you to make a decision. There are two options available to you, but you are missing pieces of crucial information for both. Which is holding you back? This, of course, leads to another choice. Should you wait for more information to come in or bite the bullet and take one direction at random? Neither decision feels comfortable right now, but you have to actively participate in the obstacles you face in order to move forward. Keywords are decision, uncertainty, balance, missing information, and deadlock. All right, Susan, I hope that made some sense for you. Now this one is for Cassie of Oracles and Beyond. She says, love this. Thank you. I needed this. Well, you're very welcome, Cassie. And she left another one down here saying, I'm trying to get better internet so we can do readings together if you want. Yes, Cassie, I would love to. I want to so bad. Um, yes, so just drop me a note when you're ready, when you want to do it, and let me know. And I'd be more than happy. I love it when we read together. It works out so nicely, I think. But anyway, Cassie, this card is for you. 
Okay, you have the two of elixirs. Okay, for these, the element is water. Astrological association is Venus and Cancer. The number is two. Position in a tree of life is the sphere of wisdom. Key meanings, love and partnerships, old and new. This card represents harmony, peace, partnership, and love. In relationship, the card signifies a deeper commitment in an existing relationship, such as an engagement, moving in together, or getting married. There's a great connection between you two, so your emotions are freely expressed and reciprocated. You feel whole and content. The Two of Cups also predicts new romance and strong passions, which may be all-consuming just now. Inspiring partnerships are favored too, so this is an auspicious card for getting together with a study partner or anyone with whom you share similar creative interests, such as writing, crafting, and other hobbies, or psychic and healing work. Ah, I know who you need to get up in a partnership with there, Cassie. <laughs> me, me, me. Whomever you hook up with, the relationship will be mutually supportive and understanding. Yes, I'm sure it will. If friendships have been difficult territory for you recently, the two of elixirs shows harmony will return, and in general, this too shows reconciliation. Old arguments will be resolved as you put the past behind you. Any ongoing negotiations will go in your favor. Two, contracts, financial statements, custody issues, or rearranging your work hours or schedule, for example. If the two represents you in your readings, the focus is on feelings and your intuition. Nurture all your relationships and enjoy the love and pleasure they bring. As a prediction card, it shows love. Deeper love is coming, and you deserve all that is on offer. Yes, so this is very much a, a card of relationships, and it doesn't have to be a romantic one. It could be a friendship, a partnership, a business person, any sort of relationship you have with someone else. This card represents two people uniting in love and compassion, the union is balanced and fair, and together they can reach new heights. While often signifying romantic soulmates, the two of elixirs can also represent a close friendship or beneficial business partnership. If you have been involved in a conflict or argument with a loved one, this card advises that all will be forgiven soon, as long as you approach each other with kindness and patience. Keywords are union, true love, soulmates, and karmic connection. All right, Cassie. I hope that made some sense for you. Next up, uh, Freaky Geek. And he wrote, if you think you need strength to turn this light on and it comes on without help, then for sure something is with you. He's talking about the bear that I had gotten. I showed yesterday that uh, it had a switch that was uh, kind of hard to turn on and off. And I agree, Freaky. If uh, if that would come on without me touching it, then, yeah, I'd say there would be something around me. So far, it hasn't done that. But I've never really put it to the test either. Anyway, Freaky, and I don't think I've ever given you a, a reading. Oh, this one's coming out. So let's go with that one. I think it's saying, read me, read me. Okay, you have the five of elixirs. 
but it's upside down. Now, the element is water. Astrological association is Mars and Scorpio. Uh, the number associated with it is five. Uh, in a tree of life position, it's in the sphere of power. And the key meanings are loss, leaving, and sorrow. Now, there are only two cards in a tarot deck whose reversed interpretations are more positive than their upright meanings. The five reverse reveals you have already experienced the lowest point in a downward cycle and as a result are too close to recovery, finally letting go of painful past memories. Ready to pick up the pieces, you will be stronger than you were before, able to face reality and move forward. An additional meaning of the card uh, is meeting up with old friends and, socially speaking, coming back to life. All right, Freaky. So if things have been rough for you, do not despair. You are on the upswing now, and things will be getting better. Next up is Sherry. Uh, she says, love you guys. Love you too, Sherry. Thanks for the prayers. Yeah, you, you need them. And she says, I love the bear. LOL. And it is a cute bear, I admit. Just not what I was wanting it for. It's okay, Sherry. Um, I don't remember if I cut these. So let me cut them again just to be on the safe side. Okay, Sherry, your card is the hermit, but it's upside down. Now in numerology, the hermit is number nine. Its astrological correspondence is to Virgo. The element is earth. Keywords are solitude, seclusion, wisdom, inner guidance, retreat, and meditation. Alternative names for this card is the old man, time, and the poor man. This corresponds to the Hebrew letter Yod. Symbol is the hand. Meaning is prudence. In a chakra, it's the heart seed for soul remembrance. And the key mean meanings are healing and self-exploration. Okay, now when this is reversed, you may be feeling alone and unsupported. However, this is more an attitude than reality. So it's worth asking yourself if you are avoiding help. The card can also show accepting a role perhaps victim or martyr that you find hard to let go of due to habit or stubbornness alternatively the card can show a time when you are cut off from your usual support system or have been unfriended by those you trusted if this chimes for you go with the upright card meaning and withdraw for a while relying on your own guidance his wisdom message, live quietly for a time. Now this says go with the upright meaning and withdraw for a while relying on your own guidance. So the upright meaning then, therefore, is there's an opportunity to take time away from routine to consider your options or advance a personal project. This card can show you enjoying solitude as you need space to process your thoughts and feelings. The hermit can show a physical journey, but more commonly he represents a state of mind in which you wisely withdraw and keep your own counsel. It can show breaking with tradition and finding a unique approach to a challenge. You may appreciate a mentor, and when you are ready, as the saying goes, the teacher will appear. Until that time, 
You have yourself to rely on, and you do have the answers. All you need is the mental space to connect with your inner wisdom. If you are under pressure to make a decision, the hermit shows you need more time. There is also a healing aspect to the hermit, and a card can appear in a reading to show self-healing and healing others. You may need to guide others and show them the way forward. Even if you're not entirely sure you can help, you are equipped to do so. At home, consider all your options carefully and avoid making big decisions at present. Prioritize your tasks and focus on planning rather than immediate action. In relationships, it says take time to invest in your current relationship or to work on your relationship within yourself. This card can also show a period of being single. Career and money is take a different approach and stand back. You may need to draw to research and professional development courses now. A mentor may guide you. The hermit appears when it's time for you to retreat from the chaos of the outside world and look inward. When there are times when advice from family and friends can be welcome, now is not one of them. You need to shed the ideas and opinions of others and figure out what you think and feel on your own. The hermit wants to know what your vision of the truth is, and that can only be figured out by some deep soul-searching. Solitude can be intimidating because it forces you to look into the deepest part of the soul and the psyche, but it's during those times that you will grow the most. When you do eventually emerge, you will bring with you the wisdom and confidence that only comes from doing the hard work. And the key words for the positive are solitude, seclusion, wisdom, inner guidance, retreat, and meditation. But like it said too, that uh, you have the reverse, not the upright. And it said you follow the upright version of the readings, but you also need to kind of withdraw for a while and rely on your own guidance. Okay. Sherry, I have a feeling this one might be... Uh, Pretty on the nose for you. I might be wrong. Okay. Next, we have Kim Fitzgerald, who sent prayers to Sherry and said it was a great card. Thank you. Okay. And Kim also said, suggested that Thomas might be able to make me a boo bear and because he had made one for Marie and Henriette. And I, I, I recall Thomas had mentioned once before that he did uh, make like um, the rim, he did make rim pods, I believe. But I, I haven't seen the boo bear. I must have missed, uh, missed that part. Whenever that was. But I have a feeling that's probably about what I was, had in mind when I was trying to buy that. And it just did not work out at all. Very bummed out. All right. So, Kim, here's a reading for you. It seems that your card is the Eight of Coins. Now the element is Earth, Astrological Association, Sun in Virgo. The uh, number associated with it is Eight. The position on the Tree of Life is Hod, the Sphere of Majesty and the Mind. And the key meanings are education and achievement. Money is on its way, often as a result of previous efforts or decisions, rather than an unsuspecting bonus or gift. 
You may be offered an opportunity to gain new skills that will be profitable in the long term. You may also consider a new career direction or be working for a promotion. In general, the card also reflects the need for a logical, diligent approach to your projects. This card is often known as the apprentice. It comes up in readings to show education and a gaining of qualification, particularly an undergraduate degree or diploma. The Eight of Pentacles also shows a personality aspect. It reveals a hardworking, trustworthy, and dedicated individual who takes his or her responsibility seriously. Take it very seriously. Okay, so basically it gives you the courage to take up a new job or start a new project in a field that you are passionate about. This card reminds you to be as dedicated as you can be and the works you undertake. You want to learn as much as possible in order to produce the best possible product. But remember to master each skill before moving on to the next. Being a beginner can be difficult. It feels like you aren't going forward as quickly as you would like. Remember that everyone has to start at the beginning and what you are experiencing is not something that you can rush. Keywords, dedication, skills, beginner, uh, new craft, passion, willingness to learn. All right, Kim, I hope that made some sense for you. Okay, Texas, and he says, we've got bad weather too. It's snowing right now, but 20 to 30 degrees tomorrow. Uh, a lot of places are closed. Yeah, I imagine they would be. I know schools have been delayed two hours. Uh, that was yesterday evening I saw that. I'm not sure what it is now. It's still 33 degrees, but those roads looked like a skating rink, to be honest. Okay, Texas, let's see what kind of reading we can get for you. Oh. And Texas, you've got the lovers. In numerology, this is represented by six. Astrological sign or planet is Gemini, the twins. Element is air, Hebrew letter refers to is re equals Zane. The symbol is the sword. The meaning is soulfulness. The chakra is the heart chakra for loving and healing. Key meanings, love and relationships, maturity and decisions. The lover's sign is Gemini, the twins. Born May 22nd to June 21st. Loving our whole selves in all our aspects raises our, raises our consciousness to love God, the universe, the great spirit, as the creator of the divine spark within. Eve is also Adam's twin, as she was created from him. In the Kabbal, the lover's Hebrew letter is Zane. As swords are in the suit of air in the tarot and symbolize clear thought and actions, this relates to the card's meaning of decisions. The tarotist John D. also comments, It is also interesting to note that Adam and Eve were expelled from the Garden of Eden. And an angel with, by an angel with a sword, Zane can also mean soulfulness or living with an awareness of our higher selves. Okay, this card shows relationships and a decision. The lovers shows relationships and a decision. The card can predict meeting a new partner or a career opportunity, and your choice now will have a significant effect on your future. In the upright position, the person committing or in the upright position, the person coming into your orbit now has a positive influence and 
officers and offers true love. Provided you did, provided you follow the guidance of your heart rather than your head, if you're willing to take a risk, ra rather than stay with a stace with a, rather than stay with a safe choice, you may soon discover your own Garden of Eden, which is fertile and rich with possibilities. If you are already in a relationship, a decision whether to take your partnership to a deeper level will be made. The issue that the leverage card raises to, is your ability to make a decision based on your long-term future rather than short-term gains. In this way, you are being asked to make a mature decision that supports your true needs. Respect. Intimacy. In this way, you are being asked to make a mature decision that supports your true needs respect, intimacy, love, and trust, and will connect to a partner who is really emotionally available to you. Whatever your situation, the message is to follow your heart's desire. An additional meaning of the love card is a young person leaving home and making independent decisions. If you're not living in your home, if you're not living in your dream home, now is the time to work toward a property and location that you will support your dreams and desires. In relationships, a love decision. Look at your patterns in previous relationships and see what your current love or prospective new partner can offer that is different and ultimately more fulfilling. If you are single, love yourself first to manifest the right relationship when the time comes. Career choices, only option may be, one option may seem easier, but look carefully to ensure that you are making the best decision into the long term. Look beyond money to your future development and ambitions. At first glance, the lover's card appears to be about romantic relationships. That can be the case. At first glance, the lover's card appears to be about romantic relationships. That can be the case, but its main theme is that of choice. When faced with choices, some of us use our intuition while others use logic. The lovers ask that you attempt to marry these two polarities. Choosing between two options can be scary. Depending on one might mean you miss out on the other. This card assures you that the one you need to choose is the one. Choosing between two options can be scary, depending on one might mean you miss out on the other. This card assures you that the one you do choose is the one you were meant to. In terms of love, this card points toward a very fulfilling relationship. Most of the time, this indicates... Uh, romantic love but also can point to your relationship with yourself are you making healthy choices and living up to the best of your ability are you treating your partner as an equal keywords are choice desire love duality relationships and questions and all right there texas okay next we have mutt dog who said uh, when she's depressed, she shops also. Uh, she also buys crystals and jewelry when you do, <laughs> when she does. And she says, miss your lives. Yes, I kind of miss my lives too. Um, I'm working on some special occasions uh, to maybe go do some more lives. We'll just have to see how they play out. And live streams might be best at this time of year when I can't really get out and do much filming like I'd like to. But, uh, okay. I'll try to remember that new name, Mutt Dog. Um, but it's great hearing from you. And you left a comment at a perfect time because... You're about to get a reading for free, as always, for free. Oh, 
Oh, I had a bunch drop out. I'm not going to do all of them. So, let me mix them back in. And uh, If it was only one or two, but uh, this was a small clump, so. And here we go. Okay, you have the chariot. In numerology, the number is seven. Uh, astrologically, uh, it corresponds to cancer. The element is water. The appearance of the chariot signals that now is a time when you can move mountains with your willpower and determination. You're being given the opportunity to ride straight into victory, but you have to make sure you set out on the right path first. Everything is moving at warp speed, but it can seem as though the horses pulling your chariot are headed in different directions. One of your biggest strengths is the ability to collect the reins and make these opposing forces work in harmony to head in the right direction. Overall, the chariot is a very positive omen when starting a new project or even a physical journey. You've left your ego behind and you can move forward with confidence. Keywords are willpower, travel, mastery of self, uh, ambition, control, force, and adrenaline. Alternative name of this card is victory. It refers to the Hebrew letter heth. The symbol is a fence or enclosure, meaning is guidance. The chakra is throat for the truth. Uh, key meanings, uh, determination, victory, and a journey. The chariot's astrological sign is cancer, as I said, which is June 22nd to July 23rd and is ruled by the moon. The crab has a shell. A protective vehicle for the body like the chariot itself. The charioteer's gauntlets have a shell-like frill at the forearms. The card indicates that the four fixed signs of Aquarius, Scorpio, Leo, and Taurus and their elements by which are symbolized by the Sphinx. In the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, the chariot is positioned on the Ace Pathway between power and destruction. And the benay meaning is understanding and the female principle or creation. The upright chariot signifies success and a major department. This is a time for determination and focus as you travel in a new direction. A decision is made and you can now begin to experience real progress in your affairs ready to take control and navigate your path, and you are poised to learn as your horizons rapidly expand. Just as the charioteer has his wand to drive him onward, you will need willpower to fuel your desires. The chariot can indicate a move or an important journey and on a mundane level. It shows you driving a car on your travels or getting a new vehicle. Here are some other possibilities. Home. Travel away from home is the focus now, rather than on extending and improving your home. You may also welcome travelers from any other states of the country. In relationships, a relationship progresses at a pace. If the cards, uh, career and money, swift progress in business affairs, the opportunity coming your way will be fighting and exciting. The opportunity coming your way will be challenging and exciting. Financially, you are, are on the road to success. So there you have it. And I hope that makes sense for you. And the last one is Sweetly Morbid Bear. So let's see what uh, what you have. 
Oh. I'll tell you, these are really getting out of my hands this morning. Here we go. In numerology, it represents 13. Uh, the ast astrological correspondence is Scorpio. The element is water. Uh, death is the universal content. Death is the universal constant. It is inescapable and it is painful, but also necessary to make room for new life. Sometimes these endings are expected, while at other times they are sudden and shocking, but they all share the same results, change. While some cards in the tarot allow you to shape your circumstances and change the outcome, death is not one of those cards. When it appears in your reading, you just have to accept that an ending is coming. Death also reminds you to explore the shadow side of your psyche in order to appreciate the light aspects of life, such as joy and positivity. You have, an under you have to understand the dark aspects like pain and grief. Your best self is well-rounded. Keywords, transformation, endings, embrace, closure, and cycle. Alternative names is mortality, Transformation, the Hebrew letter name is Nun, its symbol is the fish, meaning is decline and rebirth, and the key meaning is transformation and change. The Hebrew letter associated with death is Nun, which means fish, a symbol of sexuality and sperm. In climax, this is Le Petit Mort, the little death which leads us to nun's connotation of decline and rebirth. On the tree of life, death is placed on the 14th pathway between the spheres of the cycles of nature, rebirth and growth. Death brings endings and beginnings, sometimes all at once. This is a time of fast and deep transformation and an opportunity to let go of whatever you no longer need. Death's impact is sudden and may be shocking. You have little control over external events when death looms, but in time you will be able to see this sharp change in circumstances as a blessing, a break with the past, from relationships and friendships to work that is no longer satisfying. It's the only way forward. In this sense, death can be a release and a relief. Death, after all, is the ultimate reality check, and he leaves you with the bare bones, the truth. In certain, as, in certain areas of life, death can signify the following. At home, it means you need to find a new home. The place you are living at no longer meets your needs. New circumstances may offer an opportunity to relocate. In relationships, a relationship ends and there is a period of necessary separation or there is, a relationship ends or there is a period of necessary separation. In friendships, there will be an opportunity to reconnect when the time is right for career and money, signifying a career change or the ending of a business partnership or ways of bringing in income. Death also suggests new opportunities are on the horizon. Finally, this is a tough time, but money matters will improve, so hold tight. All right, so there you go. And I believe I got everybody on that list. Cool. I hope those might uh, apply to some of you all. I hope they make sense. I also hope this ice doesn't form too bad on the roads. <laughs> but anyway, yes, like I said, uh, I might be showing you some more of my finds here uh, tomorrow or so. We'll have to see. In the meantime, though, peace, believe, because the spirits are out there. Hope you have a blessed Friday. 
Be careful driving on those bad roads. And I will see you tomorrow, hopefully. Bye-bye.